In the next couple of lectures, we're going to dig a lot deeper into how to work with, um, with vectors or columns that are in certain data types. So we're going to talk some about factors in this lecture, and then the next lecture we'll talk about working with character strings. We're going to really focus in this case on a certain package called the Forecats package. Uh, this is one that's part of the tidyverse, and it's one that was developed originally by, by Hadley Wickham. It has a lot of nice functions that let you work with factors, and a lot of them have some kind of equivalent where you can do the same thing in BASR, but often they're just a little bit more convenient. So a lot of times I prefer those to some of the BASR options. So first, I just want to do a reminder of kind of how R is saving a factor and how you should think of these factors as we go through and talk about what you can do for them. Um, so let's start by talking about an example from the World Cup data set, which we've been using a lot lately, so you should be really familiar with it. We have some different variables there, and some of them are character strings, like the names of the players, and then some of them are numeric, like the shots or the time, but some of them are certainly factors. They're these things that can go into separate categories or separate bins. So one of the examples is the team. There we've got a number of discrete teams that, that the player can belong to. And then another one is position. So there we've got four different positions, and the player can have one of those positions. So we've got just four categories that, that something can go into. So R really is kind of thinking of these almost like bins where each player, each observation can have a value that goes into just one of these four levels or bins. And underneath the hood, R saves these actually as a number, and then it just remembers which number corresponds to which of those factor levels. But this number that underlies it, that's called the level of the factor. And depending on the order that R stored those, you might um, get a different order when you plot values with that factor or do other things with the factor. So the first thing that's helpful to know is if you want to, you can take data that you have where you have a column that's a factor, and you can take one of those labels and rename it. So in the example of the World Cup data, we've got these four different levels, and one of them is goalkeeper. Let's say that we wanted to change just this one value to goalie. We can't do it quite as easily as with a character string. We can't just say anywhere where it's a goalkeeper change it to goalie because R, again, is remembering this if it's a factor with these levels, with these discrete categories it can take. So if you try to change something to a level that's not already there, um, it can cause some problems. So instead, what you can do is this factor recode. There, we're going to take the, the column name for the factor that we want to change. So position has the vector where we want to change one of the levels. And then we're going to say what the old level is and what we want for the new level. So we can take a look at that. I'm going to load the tidyverse package. That includes um, dplyr and also tidyr and forecats and a number of others. And then we'll do. Um, See, we don't need GG themes in this case, but let's do library and World Cup. And then I'll just do some transformations. The first, I'm going to bring those row names for World Cup over so they're their own column. And then I'm also going to add this as underscore tibble. So this is a, a, um, a very traditional data frame when you pull the data in, and that means that it prints off every row when you run it. And we could take a look and see for that. So if we don't do this as tibble, when we type it in, we get everything printed out anytime we print that name. Tibbles have a few nice characteristics. They, they, they print, when they print, use the print method, they've got things like the, the dimensions. And then they've also got, um, they just print out a few of the rows instead of printing out everything. So they're just a little bit more convenient to work with. So I can show the example and you'll wanna rerun both things to reset it. But if we add on that as tibble, then when we when we type this out, we get this smaller example where we can just look at the beginning of what we, we um, are working with and also get some nice information like the dimensions right here and then the class that we have, the different variables. All right, and let's go down, uh, <clears throat> or maybe we'll filter so we can get some of the rows with the goalkeeper because right now in these first few, there are not any. So we can do filter and then the position is the goalkeeper. All right, so here are some of our examples of different players who were goalkeepers. 
if we want to make this change, we'll do it inside a mutate. So if you remember any change that we want to make to one of these columns or any new column that we want to add, we need to make sure that we do mutate and then we can do the operation inside that mutate function. So we'll do mutate. And in this case, we want to just overwrite that position. So it's going to be um, position for what we're creating here, but it'll also be a function of position. So then we just need to include what that function is. So it's this factor recode. All right, and then at the end for that, we can line up and say what we want to replace it with. So in this case, we want goalie where we used to have goalkeeper. All right, so if we run that, you can see it's printed it out. And now we have that position listed as goalie. So if we come down and we do the levels of the World Cup, and right now we haven't reassigned it, so it's going to be the old ones. So if we do the original levels of World Cup, oh, sorry, of the position for World Cup. We can see those labels listed right here. Now, if we reassign that, we'll see that one of those changes to goalie, the goalkeeper, right here. So the other example that I have in is, um, is to change the team. So I wanna show this, and we were looking at it a little bit with, with the goaler, goalie and goalkeeper example. But in base R, there was a function named factor that you could use to reassign the labels. You could do it by specifying using the levels and the labels um, uh, arguments inside that factor call. The problem with that, though, was you couldn't change just one thing. You had to change everything or at least respecify the things that weren't going to change. So if you had a case where there was a factor with a lot of different levels, you could end up having to write a really long call for that. One of the nice things about factor recode is it lets you change just a few and leave all the rest the same. That can be really useful in some cases for data. So one example is right now, uh, the label for the United States is USA, and we might want to change that to be United States. So we can take a look at that. Let's just filter right now to see those lines. And this is going to be team. And we'll use the double equals. We want to pull just the ones that equal that and then do USA. So you can see, oh, I'm going to go back and overwrite this because we want more than just the goalkeepers. Try that one more time. All right, so now if we filter, we've got the players in the US. If we want to change that to United States, we don't have to go through and specify every single other country. We can just do this mutate and we'll do team and then factor recode and team. And in this case, we want to do the United States is equal to USA. Because there's a space in United States, you want to protect this term by doing the back ticks around it. We didn't have to do that for goalie, although it wouldn't have hurt, but we didn't have to do that for goalie because that's a single word. For United States down here, we need to kind of protect that with those back ticks. So let's take a look at that. And now you can see it's changed all those levels to United States. So this is just showing an example of that in the slides if you wanted to take some notes on it. The next thing that we can do is we can change the order of those levels. So in, in that first case, we were really changing the labels that we put on them, but now we're gonna talk about how we can shift them underneath. So when we run levels for one of these functions, I'll reassign this so we have the new version now. If we come down and we take World Cup and then pull out that, um, teams, for example, and then run levels. Oh, singular. There we go. So this is giving us all of the different teams that we have, all of the levels that we have for that factor. So this is the category that 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 column can take for any of our observations. You can see right now that it is ordered so that it's alphabetical. 
we can change this order. And if we want to change order on plots or something like that, we really want to change this underlying order for how the levels of the factors are saved. So we can take a look at the first way to do that. You might want to change it so that instead of being alphabetical, it's in order based on the number of observations you have in each of those categories. So we can look at that in this World Cup data using summary. I'm going to go up and clean this up. And let's take that kind of fresh. So if we take World Cup and then group by, let's group by the um, position. And then we can do count. So you get the number in each position. And you can see that we have the most midfielders and then defenders and then forwards and then goalkeepers. So we might want to change so that the position is in that order. You can use the function called in freak, um, fact in freak to do that. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take those kinds of bins that we had and just reorder them in their level order. So you can see here those boxes have moved so that we have the one that's got the most people first and then we move down to the ones with fewer people. So we can look at an example of doing that. First, let's take a look um, and just remember what the levels are before we make the change. So we can do World Cup and actually pull out position and then do levels to get the order of the levels. So right now, defenders first, then forward, then goalkeeper, then midfielder. That's just alphabetical. So what we can do next is we can do mutate, and then we'll do position equals factor in frequency of position. Now, if you run it, nothing's going to look different for the data set itself. But if we pull out that one column and check the levels on it, you'll see that those have changed. So now we have midfielder as our first level and defender for the next and forward and goalkeeper on, and so on. Now, what this can do is it can help you when you're trying to create plots and you want a nice order for it. So let's comment this out so it doesn't run right now, but then go through and do a ggplot. And we will just do the position for the x aesthetic. And then we'll do that column. Oh, no, sorry, bar. So we want to get like a bar chart of how many players are in each of these positions. So you can see that here. You can see that showing that midfielder we have the most and then defender and so on. We might want to change this plot. So these are going in order from most to least. If we do that mutate first, you'll see that it's changed the order. So now the first factor level is midfielder and then it goes down to goalkeeper, which has the fewest players. Another thing that you might wanna do is to reorder the factor based on another column that you have. So right now we have the position and we also have things like time and shots and passes. We might want to reorder this so it moves from the player with the most shots to the player with the least shots in terms of kind of uh, medians or averages across the position. So let's take a look at that. Before we get into making this change, let's just um, take a look at the summary itself. So we can do group by and group by position. And then we can take some summaries. And because we've done the grouping, it's going to take, um, it's going to give us the values within each of the separate groups, each of the separate levels of this factor. So we could do maybe like median shots equals the median of that shots column that we have. So if we do that, you can see that forwards, their median value for shots is the highest. And then we've got midfielder and then defender and then goalkeeper. So we might want to do, we might want to reorder so that the factor levels follow this. We could do a mutate in that case, and we'll still do position, and it's going to be a function of position. We're just going to do one of these four cats functions. So we'll do um, factor and then reorder. Now there's one other piece that we need to put here. When we did it in freak, we were doing it based on the frequency of 
of that specific column. But now we want to use the values in another column to go through and do this. So we need to say what other column to use. You use the dot x argument for that. And in this case, we're saying that we want to do it um, based on the shots. Again, you can see it doesn't really look like things have changed here. But if we pull out just that, that one factor and then look at the levels, you'll see that it will go from forwards to midfielders and so on. Oh, sorry, actually the, the inverse. It's going from the lowest up to the highest. So from goalkeeper to defender up to forward who had the most shots. Again, this can be really useful when you're trying to plot things. So let's do a GG plot. And we'll start by commenting out this mutate so you can see what it would have looked like before and then we'll see how the mutate changes it. So in this case, let's do position on the x-axis and then the number of shots on the y-axis and just do points. Some of these will be overlapping. Later, we'll learn how to do B-swarm plots, which kind of like add some jitter. I'm sorry, that should be singular. All right, so we have them kind of like this right now where we're going through and it's giving for each player the number of shots. But we might want to have this. Actually, you know what? Let's do a box plot instead. So we won't have to worry about that overlap quite so much. And then we might want to shift these two. All right, so now we can see those median values. There are these, these lines in the middle of the boxes. Right now, it's in that original order going from defender to forward to goalkeeper to midfielder. So that's alphabetical starting from, from the lower part of the axis. If we take off the mutate piece now and run it again, now you can see it's reordered it. So we have the factor level with the highest median value that goes up at the top of the graph. And then we're going down to lower and lower, lower median values as we go down the plot. All right, so this is a slide again, just showing that example of reordering the levels of the position factor based on median values of shots within each position. Another thing that you might find helpful to do is to lump. So in some cases, you might have lots of, um, lots of factor levels and you have different numbers of them where there's some that show up again and again and again and some that are pretty rare. In that case, this factor lump will let you um, keep just the most common and then lump all of the rest into an other category. And that can be really helpful as you're doing summaries and tables and things like that to be able to take all of those one-offs and not have loads and loads of those that show up at the bottom of your table if you're, or your plot, but instead have this other category. So to do that, um, in the example for the World Cup data, the two most common positions that we have in terms of observations are midfielders and defenders. So if we did factor lump on position, and then we specified n equals two, it will keep two categories, those top two in terms of the, the, um, the number of observations, and then everything else will get reassigned to other. And this is what the data would look like. You will still have midfielder and defender for observations that had those values, but observations with any of those rarer values will fall into other. And this is just an example of doing that with the World Cup data. And you can see now we're getting the other uh, nested in there.